you. The word of the Lord to you tonight is revised aversion. Some of you are still hearing words that teachers have spoken in your ears and words that people have said and they told you you were stupid or you couldn't do it or you were some idiot. Ah, Revise the version. Some of you heard negative words spoken to you and others of you allowed it to go deep inside the womb of your spirit. You harbored it. You've held it. You've been at the tomb. Amen. You've been like the madman of Gadara. But I want to tell you tonight, revise the version. Amen. You don't have to accept their version. That's the lie. Don't give it the power of your belief, but begin to go into the theater of your mind and walk out on the stage of your imagination imagination which is creation and revise that version baby revisit your day you don't have to accept their word you're the master of your own destiny You got to look and live. You got to take that version and says, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm accepting right now. But this is what they told me. They told me to tell you this. And you got three days to get out of here. Pack your bags, baby. But darling, I'm getting ready to step back into the theater. Let me go to a movie here for a minute. And I'm going to walk on the stage of my imagination. Revisit that day. Touch your neighbor and say, you better take another look. Touch somebody and say, take another look. See, you're in a new day. See, you're not going to move ahead until you get tired of the day you're in. You're not going to get into the things of God like you should until you say, enough. Enough. I'm not accepting this news. Who do you think you are? Let me go back, amen. And speak to the Holy One of Israel. For I didn't make this. And that's why some of you have the mystery of your bed. Every 24 hours. The same one you get up out of. You make and you unmake. Which means life is nothing but you making and unmaking. Whatever I make, I can unmake. Whatever I unmake, I can make. Hello, maker. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker. Jesus. Hira Mashanda. You better go revisit your day. You better go look at your children differently. Amen. You better go there and tell old dumb Tommy, amen, that's got failing grades and say, baby, you're a genius. <laughs> you better put it in there, amen, and get him into that same movie theater you're in, amen, and have him going around saying, I'm a genius, amen, amen. Even when they see those zeros, say, baby, you know, that's a hundred, amen. You just missed two numbers right in front of it, but you held it in your mind, but you are... You better revisit your day. You're a winner. Don't you know who you are? Create a prophetic rumor. See, you on your way, child. That's a light thing. Amen. You got a 50. Let's go on out to lunch and celebrate. Amen. It's just a matter of time for you double that. Jesus. Whew. Jesus. I got, I got four more points. I'll tell you. Every time one really forgives, 
That is, every time one relives the event as it should have been lived, one is born again. <laughs> every time you forgive Pastor Dolly, you relive the event the way it should be lived. That's being born again. You become born again in that situation. That's what salvation is all about. Jesus came and had to go into the garden. He had to start in the garden of Gethsemane where man fell. He, had, he was, you know what he was doing? He was entering into his imagination and reliving. He was praying as if it was sweats, as drops of blood. He was reliving. He had to go back in the garden because it began in the garden. So he had to go back and he had to say, now let's see what it was here that happened, amen. So he had to go back and says, man started it here in the garden. And so while he was there in prayer, he had to pray until he says, let me create this drama that someone will go out and portray me. Go ahead, Judas, because we got to get this thing right of what happened in the garden. And then he had to turn around and then carry the very tree that man ate of. That's why he was hung on a tree. He had to get the thorns on his head because the part of the curse that he was supposed to work by the sweat of his brow. Now, I've already sweated in the garden. Amen. So take this crown of thorns, amen, because see, I was supposed to work among thorns and thistles. Put it on my head. And everywhere man fell, he says, I'm taking it up. the tree and then turned around and made you trees of righteousness. So all Christ was doing was forgiving by reliving and then got up the way Adam was supposed to get up. That's why it says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells where? In you. That's resurrection power. It will even quicken your mortal body. See, some of you need to wake up and activate that spirit. It is an, it is an ever increasing spirit. Hmm. Let me move on here. Now you need to catch this one. I'm going to try to read it to you slow. Never mind, you just get the tape. We are led to believe a lie when we see with and not through the eye. We are led to believe the lie when we see with and not through the eye. <laughs> as long as you're seeing with your eye, you're believing a lie. Because you're supposed to be seeing through. the eye. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Romans 14, 5 says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Mm -hmm. Now, in our conversations, by listening, you can hear what you want to hear and persuade those beyond the range of the outer ear. Speak it inwardly in your imagination only. So you got to make your inner conversation match your fulfilled desire. 
<laughs> revisit that day. See, you've got to make your inner conversation, because see, now you're going to live in a realm of fulfilled desire. You've got to start talking that thing until you believe your own situation, where people are saying you're walking in a lie, but